right now on Secrets of Louisville Chefs, a chocolate lover's paradise. Everything's better with chocolate. We're learning the secrets to signature dishes at Louisville's Chocolate Bar. Amazing. You've had it for dessert, but what about dinner? We have chocolate in a lot of hidden places. See how they're using chocolate to create savory pasta, plus Mexican pork tenderloin with a secret ingredient. We won't tell that though. Oh, did we just tell it? <laughs> it's chocolate used in every way imaginable. And the secrets to making the same incredible food yourself, right now on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Everything's better with chocolate. <laughs>Hi everybody and welcome to Secrets of Louisville Chefs, I'm Kevin Harned and this time we've made our way to a unique location located in Westport Village. It's the Chocolate Bar, but as you'll see coming up, they're serving more than just chocolate. Oh yes, it's a lot more than dessert. If you like wings, you gotta try the famous buffalo chicken chowder, topped with blue cheese crumbles. Oh, wow, this is amazing and actually it's even better than real wings. <laughs> because there's no mess. You can also get steaks, like the Jack Daniels New York Strip, and incredible sandwiches, like the Turkey Berry, with a unique bright pink sauce. We'll show you the secrets to making that coming up. Also ahead, crepes made with bananas and Baileys, and the Chocolate Bar's signature martini. There you have it, chocolate martini. And of course, chocolate desserts. Our desserts are second to none. Our Belgium chocolate mousse cake. We have lots of desserts. We do fondues. Homemade chocolate fondue. Secret recipe. It's not milk chocolate. It's not dark chocolate. Falls somewhere in between. We also do s'mores at the table where you can make your own s'mores. There's chocolate all over the menu. We have chocolate in a lot of hidden places. We have a chocolate vinaigrette. We have a chocolate bar baguette. It's a whole new, new concept. Everything's better with chocolate. Everything. Even pasta gets better with the addition of chocolate. It's actually my favorite dish that we have. You gotta taste it to believe it or make it yourself when you learn the secrets from Chef Christina Hill. I love cooking. I've been cooking probably since I was seven maybe. My grandma started me in the kitchen. I remember we were making chicken noodle soup from scratch. She's come a long way since then and now she's revealing the secrets to this chocolate bar signature. It's uh, white chocolate and cream and basil and a bunch of special seasonings. We're gonna start with the garnish, which is our corn and pepper medley. This is uh, red peppers, green peppers, and corn. Okay, in our garlic butter. So we're gonna go ahead and let that heat up for a second. Just keep an eye on that. We're gonna go ahead and throw the pasta in the water. We're using fettuccine. Now, here's where the chocolate comes in. It looks like Alfredo, but it's much, much better. It's white chocolate and uh, basil and cream and special seasonings. Secret chocolate bar seasonings. It's not a super strong chocolate taste. It is, um, but it's rich. It's a very rich sauce to it. Everything's better with chocolate. Everything's better with chocolate and this dish gets better still with shrimp. Chef Christina sautés those in a pan lined with hot oil. We're gonna salt and pepper those shrimp. Give it a little seasoning. Those just need to be in there for a few minutes. Starts out at a grayish pink. You want it to get pink, orange type color, and then it's done. So about two minutes, probably on both sides. Just adding the pasta into the sauce. That way it incorporates. I'm gonna let that go and get reduced just a little bit. A minute later, and we're ready to eat. We have the chocolate bar pasta. And then we have our garlic crostinis, just as a garnish. We take a long baguette, we slice it real thin, and then we have our garlic butter that we used on the corn. Put it on the crostinis and just uh, put them on the press. Okay, we have our corn and pepper medley. It smells really good. And last but not least, we have our shrimp and our last bit of garnish is chiffonade basil a 
over the top and a little sprinkling of the white chocolate, shaved white chocolate. It's our chocolate ball pasta that you can add shrimp, chicken, or steak to. Chocolate for dinner? You gotta love that. Coming up, see how you can use it to put a new twist on pork tenderloin. It's one of the most popular dishes on the chocolate bar menu. It is very good. Plus, creative crepe combinations. And we're loading. And the secrets to the chocolate bar's signature chocolate martini. It's all ahead right here on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Hey everybody, we're back with more Secrets of Louisville Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett, this time coming to you from the Chocolate Bar in Westport Village. And as the name suggests, it's a chocolate lover's paradise. The desserts are some of the best in town. Cakes, mousses, and there's plenty of chocolate behind the bar too. Martinis and a lot more. We have 40 plus flavors of hot chocolate alone, spiked or not spiked as well as spiked milkshakes for, uh, for the summertime. Coffee drinks, milkshakes, you name it. And there's plenty for the rest of the family too. The kids can enjoy in the chocolate as well. We have uh, chocolate fondue, we have the s'mores where the kids can roast their own marshmallows, they can have their own campfire at the table while the parents enjoy the martinis. Best of both worlds. Of course, it's not all about chocolate. You can get hearty lunches and dinners here, too, with a lot of things you won't find anywhere else. You know, it's a whole different type of cooking here. Anthony Picago is one of the chocolate bar chefs. We take a lot of pride in our kitchen. He's lived all over the world. Even in Spain for three years, just about. He's a Louisville guy now, and he's cooked all over town. Places like the Polo Fields and Lake Forest Country Clubs and the Village Anchor. Now at the Chocolate Bar, Anthony is doing one-of-a-kind dishes like this. Mexican pork tenderloin. And he's revealing the secrets so you can do the same thing at home. What we do is we'll start with a whole pork tenderloin. Take your tenderloin. This is a ancho chili powder, uh, cocoa powder, some other little seasonings that are in there. You got a little bit of cinnamon in it. Just coat it really well. Once you get that coated, you'll take, put some oil in the pan, sear the pork on the outside. As you can see, it's starting to bubble along the edges. We just let that cook for a few minutes on each side. Take it, turn it over, it locks in all the flavor of the pork. You get the flavor of the cocoa powder and the ancho on the outside. And we just let it sear all the way around. Don't cook it all the way through. Once that's done, you let it sit and rest. It will come out looking something like this. If you wanted to, you could cook it all the way through by sticking it in the oven to let it finish. But what we do here is we'll cut the end of it off. As you can see, it's nice and red in the middle. And we'll cut four medallions off of here. If you're doing it at home, you can use your frying pan that you were cooking us in still. But here, we'll take a little bit of oil on the flat top. We'll take the fork and set it right up here to finish it. And we'll take our potatoes. These are just uh, red potatoes. They've been par cooked. And what we'll do is we'll finish them off in the fryer. We'll just drop them down for about two, three minutes to brown them. Flip the pork. You can see it's turning nice and brown on all the sides. Our potatoes are done. They're nice and ready to be used. And we'll take some Parmesan cheese. And we'll take a little bit of salt and pepper. Just toss that around a little bit. Put that right here on the plate. This is our ancho sauce that we put over the top of it. It's ancho chilies, demi-glaze. Um, we grind that up, add a little bit of uh, cumin maybe to it and some salt and pepper just to give it the seasoning. As you can see, the color on the uh, pork looks very nice. 
we should be about ready. The pork medallions go right on the plate with the potatoes and salsa, then the sauce. All right, we have the chili sauce. We'll just drizzle some of that over the top of it. And that is your Mexican pork. Come and enjoy it, it is very good. I never would have guessed that it's chocolate that would have made the pork taste so good, but it really worked in a unique way. You might also be surprised to find out what this building used to be. Believe it or not, it was a bank, which presented some challenges to chocolate bar owner Sandy Peepmeyer. We had a great obstacle. We had a bank vault, 80 square feet, 800 safety deposit boxes, and a three-ton door. It was either shut this room off, use it for storage, or do something creative. They tiled the floor with what else? Pennies and a few nickels to form the shape of a martini glass. The old vault is now known as the Vaultini. But it's a quiet little space for a private party and lots of fun. I could see many proposals in there. We've had lots of date nights, lots of anniversaries, lots of fun. On Wednesdays, you can get a free massage in the Vaultini when you buy a martini. Mondays, it's free manicures and it doesn't stop there. Once a month we do martini and masterpieces where the women can come in and they can get a martini and they do a painting, release the inner artist. Massages, manicures, art classes, like they say, everything's better with chocolate. <laughs> and we have more fun with chocolate coming up on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Next, the secrets to making the signature chocolate martini. Plus, creative combinations for crepes and a sandwich that's all dressed in pink. Stay with us. More secrets from the chocolate bar coming up next on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Hi everybody, Kevin Harned back with you again for more Secrets of Louisville Chefs, this time at the Chocolate Bar in Westport Village, where you'll find great food, desserts that are to die for, and incredible cocktails too. That is the blood orange and rosemary martini. Awesome drinks, awesome service. It's a neighborhood kind of place where customers become more like friends and family to owner Sandy Peepmeyer. Love to entertain. I love to have people come enjoy themselves, have good food, good entertainment. I can't always be playing. It's a great place for cocktails, but also lunch and dinner. You won't leave hungry, I can guarantee you that. Anthony Picago is one of the chocolate bar chefs, and he does a lot more than just desserts. We have a wide variety of food, some with chocolate, some without. There's fresh pasta with seafood, Hearty steaks like this one wrapped in bacon and smothered with gorgonzola cheese and the famous chocolate bar flatbreads. We have like a prosciutto, basil, a pesto chicken, pulled pork barbecue, steak and peppers. And this flatbread featuring fresh strawberries topped with a balsamic vinegar glaze. And one of my favorite non-chocolate items is this, the turkey berry sandwich. It has a raspberry mayo, with spring mix, jack cheese, you can get it anytime, lunch or dinner. And here on Secrets of Louisville Chefs, you can also get the secrets to making it yourself. The secrets for the turkey berry, ciabatta bun, we shall split it in half. You can use any, you know, any kind of bread basically if you want. We have a raspberry mayonnaise that we make in house. You can take raspberry preserves and mayonnaise and mix them together and you'll end up with the same thing. The raspberry mayonnaise goes on top, goes on the bottom, you got the pink mayonnaise, and we add some spring mix, then we add some turkey, put it right on top of the spring mix, next we use Monterey Jack cheese, once you get to there, we'll place the top on it, and we'll move over to the panini grill, set it right up in here, a little bit of butter across the top. Press down on it and let it go for about five minutes. So it'll melt the cheese and warm all the way through. 
If you don't have a panini press, you could use a grill or a frying pan. You could two, use two pans, put one on top of it to hold it down in place, and just let it brown on the sides and turn it over. Do the same thing. That way your cheese will melt and the heat will radiate through it and you'll have a warm sandwich when it's done. We'll pull it off two picks to hold it together. We'll slice it and then we'll take it. Put one here. Place one there. And there's your turkey berry sandwich a la chocolate bar. So it's true, there is a lot more than chocolate at the chocolate bar. But let's be real, if there was ever one place you wanted to save room for dessert, <laughs> this would be it. Whatever your sweet tooth craves, it's here. Cupcakes, mousses, chocolate creme brulee, and fresh crepes filled with what else? Chocolate. It is Ghirardelli dark chocolate. Amazing. The crepes come in all kinds of combos. Strawberry with chocolate, and this, what might be the most popular of them all. This is the banana, baileys, and chocolate crepe. It starts with a made from scratch crepe and a healthy dose of melted Ghirardelli dark chocolate. I'm gonna take a few slices of banana, put it on the dark Ghirardelli chocolate that's inside of our crepe. The next ingredient comes from the bar. Finally, you add the shot of Bailey's to the inside of the crepe. And we're just gonna fold the sides of the crepe in and follow with the bottom. Garnish with another handful of sliced bananas. And of course, a load of powdered sugar. And we're loading. <laughs> Some homemade whipped cream, a rose petal, and a side of ice cream. It's time for dessert. And here at the chocolate bar, dessert also comes in the form of a martini. I'd say one of our most popular martinis is the chocolate martini. Mixologist Jeremy Bogus is revealing the secrets to how it's made. It starts off with about an ounce and a half of three olives vodka. We add a little uh, Dutch red wine. It's called cocoa vine. It's a Dutch red wine infused with chocolate. The secret ingredient, our house-made chocolate fondue. A little shot of heavy cream and the chocolate martinis get chocolate rims. Dark chocolate, crushed up. The straw in the martini is also made of chocolate. Take a look at that. There you have it, chocolate martini. If you like chocolate like I do, you simply have to try one of these. But before we go, there's another martini you should check out. It's the mother of all martinis. It's called the Megatini. It takes two shakers to make it. And when it's all done, it's big enough for an entire table to share. Doesn't that look fun? Just remember, drink responsibly, especially with that one. We hope you've enjoyed going behind the scenes at the chocolate bar. I'm Kevin Harnett, and we'll see you next time on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. Secrets. Give you one more secret. Secrets.